All right, let's go over the Crow Pi 2 today. This is a Raspberry Pi laptop that does a little bit of everything. You have Arduino support, you can learn some Python or Scratch. You can even go into programming Minecraft. And then I'll probably round this video out with showcasing emulated games through RetroPie. So, so some old Super Nintendo games we're gonna play on it as well. And with all that, uh, check the timestamps as if you are interested in one of these sections, by all means, you can skip to it. But with that said, let's go into the unboxing, showcase the overall hardware that's in this machine as it's quite impressive. And uh, I'll give you the pros, cons, and conclusion at the very end. All right, we're unboxing the Crow Pi 2 here. This is an all-in-one STEM learning platform and a Raspberry Pi laptop. On the very first shot here, we got just some cards. This looks like just cardboard cutouts. We'll probably do something with this in one of the activities. I'm gonna set these to the side. We have the user manual, which I'm gonna give to my daughter and see how well she does with this. We have, oh, a whole host of things for the breadboard and everything else that's in here. We got servos, we have Arduino components, uh, pretty much sky's the limit. I'm not going to go over each one of these. Uh, we'll just set those over here and zoom into those at the end. Even comes with a little mouse, a little flat, a little flatter mouse, but overall pretty good. Little remote control kit with a 32 gig SD card. We're probably gonna need that shortly. Power cable, power brick, and the power brick's gonna be a 12 volt, two amp, 24 watt. Couple jeweler's screwdrivers, a Phillips and a flathead. Some old school SNES uh, style remotes. Uh, that's gonna be fun for when we do the retro box. And then the Pi itself, or the Crow Pi itself. Uh, let's take a look at this. Here we are. Overall, I really like the construction. It's a little bit bulkier than you'd expect, but honestly, I didn't think uh, they'd get as much as they did in here. So uh, the actual packaging itself, very well done. The actual layout itself, also spot on. Uh, looks very much like a laptop. You have the overview. I love this layout. You can tell. As the second iteration, they really, really put a lot of attention to detail here. Um, so I'm going to go over each one of these, but I think I just wanted to do the unboxing first, just so you have a good in initial impression of what we're dealing with, and then we'll jump on the actual uh, desktop and start screen recording uh, some of the initial setup. All right, so I wanted to start out with the Crow Pi on the actual desktop. It boots into this screen if you image your Raspberry Pi with the Crow Pi image. Uh, you just get into here, go into learning. If you don't have an account over on here, you can see that I'm already signed in under Chris Titus Tech, but you get you can assign it so you have multiple kids using this computer or multiple adults. You can easily create a new account for each one. Go into learning, go ahead and pick whichever one, Scratch or Python. We're going to go Python today. And from here, you have a whole bunch of cool stuff. I love the way they structured this to where if you want to learn about the speakers, um, or whatever it is, you can click on it and it immediately takes you to that lesson. So if you want to interface with something on the board, you can just click on what you're looking for. Now, as far as the, the actual lesson plan or the lesson set up here, uh, you have to be somewhat adept already. I don't know how well my nine-year-old would do with this. However, someone that's already familiar with programming uh, will do fine. I'm going to see if I can't break her into it. Uh, but first, I would recommend using like CodeCombat.com, uh, not affiliated or anything, just go to CodeCombat.com. It's a good way to break in someone around that age into Python scripting. LED, this was a really cool one right here. You could actually, uh, on the actual Pi over here, the Crow Pi, when I hit play here, it should go ahead, wipe through all the animations, which is really neat. And... Uh, these are actual Python scripts. It goes through the entire thing. This isn't a dumbed down version of it. That's why I recommended like the code combat version. So on here, you can see all the different things that this script is doing. And like I said, this lady on the right side 
walks you through what each one of these is doing, which is really cool. Uh, the last thing I like to do is the little time here, the, the seven digit time. This is really neat to see. Over here, you can see kind of the actual clock that comes up and you'll see uh, it goes ahead and ticks and it's in a while loop. And you can like change this around, set things around. So uh, if you want to like make it blink, I'll go ahead and change this and add this little right display. So I take it around a little bit with it so you can see it kind of go like that. So you can make like a cool countdown timer. You can freak your friends out with this and say, hey, uh, do this. And then after it hits like zero, have the buzzer blow. I mean, just all kinds of fun projects that you can do with this aspect of it. But that's all I'm going to cover on this one. Uh, there is a breadboard, so you can do a lot more Arduino Dino stuff. Probably in the future, I would probably set up uh, something I always kind of wanted to do ever since watching Jurassic Park from the 90s. Set up like uh, industrial locks on the doors and then have one button to press and then have it fire off all the locks using Linux. You could recreate the whole Jurassic Park scene with the raptors coming in the building. It's a unique system. I know this. It's all the files of the whole park. It tells you everything. That'd be kind of fun. So, I mean, just to something, if I had a lot of time and unlimited resources, I totally would do that skit on YouTube. But needless to say, for today, this is just kind of the background of this portion of the Crow Pie. But it has so much more, so let's get into that. All right, back on the home screen, if you click on Python, all this does is launch right into the, the IDE. So we can actually go ahead and take those scripts. It saves off all of them on your computer, so you can actually do a lot of fun things with them. So... Uh, if you're looking for the scripts or those lessons that we just went over, it's actually under Pi user, your username, and then Python, and then it kind of everything you've done from your lesson plan gets actually put into here. So whatever you have going on, you can just pull it up, which is, is really cool. So if we wanted to pull up that buzzer alarm, we can go ahead and clean this up. I'm going to only make it like a half a second, so just a little blip, and uh, we'll go from that. So a little buzzer alarm there. That's all it is, is just going from the more kiddie version with the actual lesson plan directly into uh, the IDE and actually coding in real life. So I love the transition there. I think that's pretty smart. So back in here, um, a lot of other YouTube uh, videos covering this, all they're doing usually is actually pulling into projects page and then just running these things and hooking them up. It's not really coding or anything. It's just kind of taking the pre-built stuff, just showcasing what this laptop can do. It does quite a bit. Uh, fun thing was the Flappy Bird. Me and my daughter were hitting on the Flappy Bird game, pressing the little touch sensor, and it has like its own little homemade Flappy Bird, which is cool, kind of cool. Like here, I'll just play it real fast, just so you can see what it does. And even has its own little sound effects, which are kind of annoying, but you can tap. It has a little touch sensor. Uh, oh, I suck at that game. All right. Well, anyways, but most of everything in the projects thing, these are just pre-rendered Python scripts that are readily available. Now, getting into Minecraft, this is where it probably piqued my daughter's interest in really learning Python because uh, she loves Minecraft. Now, Minecraft Pi is its own custom version of Minecraft, so you're not going to join any multiplayers with this. So here is the base screen from Minecraft. You can see all the projects over here, like generating a blocks, teleporting a player, all these things and how to do that in uh, Python down in the bottom right. Uh, but even more so than that is the actual game window. So you have your IDE, game window, and then the actual projects. So let's generate some TNT and it gives you all the code. So basically all you're doing here is taking what they're doing and kind of breaking down each line saying, hey, you're setting the TNT variable to 46, which is the block ID, activated zero. Uh, the player, it's actually planting it at your player location. So you see activated status, it breaks down that variable, and that's it. So that's kind of cool. So like as activated goes on, we can do that uh, and explode it. So really, it's, it's forcing you, there's no cut, cut and paste, so it actually forces them to actually type in these commands. So you'd import your modules, so I'll do that real fast. And we're gonna change up some of the code as we're doing it here. We're gonna just say activate it on. Uh, well, we might end up blowing ourselves up. All right, so I modified the code a little bit. Let's see what happens with this. We're gonna just start 
jump into game, and then what I'm gonna do is uh, hit escape, and then I arrow down, and then I can actually run this entire script, and we can see what happens. So we'll go ahead and hit run, back to game. So, come up to it. Boom, and it should blow up, right? Let's see, oh, sweet. So that's just the basic breakdown of just kind of having fun. This would be a really good way for the kids to play around with Python code and see the actual uh, real world ramifications of changing some of the things around and changing the variables and just kind of showcasing this little aspect just to give them a little nudge. And, and the examples are very good. As far as all the other stuff in here, uh, I didn't really get much of the micro bit stuff. Um, I, I tried a little bit of messing around with it. Uh, this was kind of cool logic based programming, but uh, again, I didn't really mess too much with this. Uh, the gaming aspect, this is kind of just little fun games like Fla Flappy Bird, which we just played, and other things they can actually play directly on here, which is cool. Oh boy. But this isn't really the games that we'd want to play on here. All right, so for the gameplay portion of this, the Raspberry Pi does not have enough power to remotely send a connection so I can screen cap and play a game at the same time. And I don't feel like ripping this apart just to plug in an HDMI kind of defeats the purpose. So I thought, hey, let's just go ahead, set it up, launch the emulation station, retro pie it up right from here and uh, play a little game live. So you can see kind of how it would actually respond in real time. Obviously, not the best lighting, but uh, hey, uh, the whole purpose of this, just to see the actual gameplay, smoothness, is there any audio stutters, that type of thing. Here we go. So I just wanted to kind of showcase how awesome this is. Just being able to play your regular games. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse here. I just kind of want to show some sample of the gameplay. Pretty much uh, indistinguishable. Anybody that's played on a RetroPie before knows it's awesome. Just completely awesome. I love it. Now back here on the main menu, uh, I'll just go ahead and exit out just to kind of show you the desktop. And I'll Alt F4 for that. And we're back at our home screen on the RetroPie. Pretty simple. I would say with uh, RetroPie, how I've retrofitted it with the CrowPie, uh, I wouldn't recommend this way as you have to launch it through terminal. Um, I would probably just get a second SD card and then use one SD card for RetroPie, one SD card for CrowPie for just uh, learning, so maybe keep them separate, but if you did want to combine them into two, this is how I did it. All right, so this laptop, I'm gonna give you the pros and cons real fast. I thought it was very well built. Uh, some surprises here were I loved the screen. The look of the screen um, was fantastic. I absolutely love that. All the integrated hardware I, I thought was well laid out. I didn't have any issues. If I was gonna nitpick a couple things, probably like the fan, but I like to replace all the stock fans with like uh, Noctua's or something like that that's really, really whisper quiet. But again, you're not gonna probably notice anything. That's just me nitpicking. Uh, as far as having good AC, both the wall and a little spot to hide like a battery adapter. So you could either charge your phone or run this system for an extended period of time. As far as the cons, I will say, uh, I was kind of disappointed in keyboard and mouse. I, you know, I didn't really expect much, but uh, I, I didn't really like, like this mouse is kind of cheap and uh, uh, not not well designed. I would probably just throw this in the trash and, and just grab like a Logitech and, and use that. And if you were just putting this on a desk or something, maybe like a little wired keyboard or something like that, you could just toss down and use that instead of the actual Bluetooth. Other criticisms, the actual distribution, uh, Raspbian with uh, the CrowPie modifications on top. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of this, uh, even though I love the actual CrowPie module they put in where you could launch into that learning. I thought the learning module was great. 
Uh, however, uh, there was a little bit dated. So doing an update and upgrading. Uh, also, a lot of the learning materials going over Python, uh, more based around Python 2 than Python 3, which obviously uh, Python 2 is getting a little long in the tooth these days. But I think it's a great base to get started. And then you can easily transition to Python 3, but it's good to know that some of these components, uh, you'll need to learn new modules and really seek out some of that advice through the internet um, and when you get into more of a deep dive. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy the out-of-box experience just using the CrowPy image. And then just the okay, kind of as I expected, would be like these SNES controllers. I'm not a fan. Uh, they're definitely the cheapo ones that are like five or 10 bucks on Amazon. I would recommend like an 8-bit DO or um, you could easily go into like an Xbox 360 and just use those controllers as I'm kind of a controller snob here. Um, but if you're interested in those types of controllers, I'll leave links in the description. As far as my recommendations, I would love to get the eight gig model, the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 instead of the four gig like I had in this video. Uh, I thought uh, the four gig was fine for a lot of the learning portions, but when I really wanted to add more and really modify the system out and things of that nature, I would prefer the eight, but uh, the four handled everything I threw at it just fine. But that's gonna do it for today's video in the Crow Pi 2. I absolutely love this. And if you're homeschooling kids and you wanna teach them Python or something of that nature, by all means, the price is worth the mission for sure. I absolutely love this. I will be utilizing it here in the future. Uh, maybe I'll make another video about, uh, you know, doing a RetroPie install on it or something of that nature and kind of show more of a deep dive in that realm of things. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.